The U.S. Army's latest move in the Armored Multipurpose Vehicle Program may look like a routine contract update on paper, but beneath the surface it signals a much larger strategic shift in how the United States plans to sustain and expand its armored capability. On December 5, 2025, Army Contracting Command issued a $198.4 million modification to BAE Systems under contract W56HCV23C0024. The language of the notice suggests support for a future purchase of 240 AMPVs, yet the real purpose of the award is not to buy fully assembled vehicles. Instead, this contract is a lifeline, one designed to keep the York, Pennsylvania, production line active, skilled, and ready before the next major order arrives. It is a bridge, but a strategic one, a deliberate effort to preserve America's armored vehicle industrial base at a moment of unprecedented global demand. For those watching U.S. armored programs closely, this is a classic example of how the Pentagon protects critical manufacturing capacity. Armored vehicles cannot simply be turned on and off like a tap. The supply chains are complex, the components require long lead times, and the specialized workforce at plants like York represents decades of institutional knowledge. If the line slows or pauses, everything from machining tolerances to subcontractor stability becomes vulnerable. The Army understands this, which is why modification P00041 injects funding specifically into engineering work, tooling upgrades, the acquisition of long lead items, and activities that maintain steady production flow. Without such measures, the next major AMPV lot could have faced delays, increased costs, or reduced industrial agility, none of which the United States can afford in the current security climate. The AMPV program itself sits at the center of the Army's modernization efforts. After more than half a century of service, the M113 family, once the backbone of American mechanized mobility, is finally being phased out. The AMPV, built on a Bradley-derived chassis, is tailored for today's threat environment. Its 600-horsepower diesel engine delivers the mobility required to maneuver alongside Abrams tanks and Bradleys, ensuring that armored brigades maintain tight tactical cohesion. This matters more than ever in contested terrain, where synchronized movement and rapid response can decide the outcome of a battle before it fully develops. Protection levels on the AMPV reflect the realities of modern warfare. Composite armor, modular enhancements, and a significantly more robust hull give crews survivability against medium-caliber fire, artillery fragmentation, and the indirect fire threats that have become defining characteristics of contemporary conflicts. The interior volume is dramatically increased compared to the M113, enabling mission modules that support advanced C4 ISR systems, medical evacuation stations with improved patient capacity, or the integration of a 120mm mortar system capable of delivering fast, accurate indirect fire. The open architecture approach means the vehicle is already prepared for future battlefield technologies, from autonomous navigation aids to secure networking solutions hardened against electronic attack. The key point, however, is cost. A full AMPV with systems, integration, and support typically runs between $6 and $8 million per vehicle. That means $198.4 million is far below the amount required to cover a 240-vehicle buy. The Army is not hiding that fact. Instead, it is using this award to ensure continuity, essentially prepaying for the stability of the production ecosystem that future orders will depend on. Once the next major production lot is formalized, the budget will look entirely different and will be delivered under a separate contract action. For now, the priority is ensuring that the industrial machinery behind the AMPV remains hot. Operational experience with the AMPV is already shaping thinking in armored formations. Units equipped with the platform report improved mobility discipline, especially in mixed columns operating under threat of artillery or drone surveillance. The Mission Command variant stands out for its resilient communications architecture, designed to maintain situational awareness even in high jamming environments, a capability that aligns with the lessons emerging from Europe and the Middle East. 
The medical evacuation variant increases survivability for wounded personnel by reducing extraction times and improving onboard treatment capacity. Meanwhile, the mortar carrier variant extends indirect fire reach to over 7 kilometers, delivering rapid support to mechanized infantry during offensive or defensive maneuvers. In every case, the AMPV offers a step change in relevance compared to the aging M113 fleet. Yet the story does not end at the tactical level. The larger significance of this contract modification lies in the industrial dimension. York, Pennsylvania, is one of the anchors of the U.S. tracked vehicle production base. BAE Systems relies on a broad network of suppliers, many of them small or specialized businesses, to deliver critical components. Interruptions to that ecosystem risk hollowing out supply chains at a time when Western nations are collectively trying to rebuild their defense industrial capacity. Washington's decision to maintain uninterrupted AMPV production is thus not only about fulfilling Army requirements, it is also about demonstrating the United States' commitment to sustaining an industrial base robust enough to support both national and allied demands. This message resonates beyond U.S. borders. European militaries are rapidly expanding procurement of armored platforms, driven by the war in Ukraine and fears of broader regional escalation. Stockpiles are being consumed at rates not seen in decades, and mechanized fleets are undergoing accelerated modernization cycles. In this environment, any weakening of U.S. production capacity would ripple throughout the alliance. By taking early steps to secure industrial continuity, Washington signals to its partners that it recognizes the pressure on global supply chains and intends to remain a reliable pillar of armored vehicle production. The AMPV program, therefore, sits at the intersection of operations, industry, and geopolitics. The contract modification may be technical, but its implications are strategic. It keeps engineers employed, machines running, and suppliers funded. It ensures that when the Army signs the next major production lot, the infrastructure is intact, efficient, and ready to scale. It gives soldiers on the ground the confidence that the support vehicles accompanying them are modern, survivable, and interoperable with the rest of the armored fleet. And it signals to allies that the United States is serious about maintaining its role as the industrial engine of Western land power. In the years ahead, as armored brigades continue transitioning to the AMPV family, the importance of this decision will become clearer. Modern land warfare demands resilient industrial ecosystems as much as it demands high-performance vehicles. The AMPV modification issued in December is not just a procurement action, it is a strategic investment in America's ability to equip its forces for the challenges of tomorrow.